Let's start off with this. We have yet another gas supply agreement deal gone sour. Niger Delta Power Holding Company Limited and Aquagas forcing the federal government <coughs> now to keep paying over $10 million monthly with or without gas supply. What do you make of this? Well, <coughs> let me clarify a few things um, because I think there's a real habit to jump to demonize issues um, within the commercial space that are seen to be um, um, badly construed and ill-intentioned against government. I don't think in this case that has been the case at all. You have to understand that when you enter into a gas supply agreement, there is a burden placed on the upstream gas producer to make investments required to supply the off-taker, which in this case is the Niger Delta Power Holding Company, with the amount of gas. Now, in an instant where the off-taker is not able to pay for that gas through whatever, for whatever reason, the, um, the amounts that were invested in providing that gas um, are still, have, still have to be amortized by the upstream uh, uh, investor. So in this case, what you have was a take or pay agreement, which is a very standard um, uh, instrument used in these industries that states that you, the, uh, the off-taker of that gas that I am going to produce on your behalf, uh, need to give me the assurance that regardless of what your situation is, um, you will offtake that gas uh, from me. Now, unfortunately, in the case of um, AccuGas, what has happened is that the offtaker, uh, Nigerian Power Hold, uh, the Niger Delta Power Holding Company, was not able to make adequate payments for a variety of reasons. Number one, the wheeling capacity of the transmission company of Nigeria was very low, okay? So in other words, the amount of gas that's being produced did not translate into a commensurate amount of energy that could be transmitted to the, uh, to the um, uh, uh, distribution companies. Number two, the tariff system and the collection system for the monies that are due to those GENCOs uh, was low. So effectively, you have a debt buildup along the value chain. And in a bid to avoid the upstream producer from being left with this carrying the bag, having made all these investments, we came up with a partial risk guarantee. Okay, which is a guarantee provided by the uh, World Bank that is a standby guarantee that in the event of default by the off-taker, the government of Nigeria provides that sovereign guarantee to make a payment on their behalf. Now, the implications of calling that guarantee would be a, down, a potential downgrading of the nation's uh, exactly sovereign. there. Majami, I would uh, like to butt in now. You talk about implications and guarantees and safety and security of all of this transaction and business, but if Nigeria is reported for defaulting in payments now, the country's credit rating will not only be downgraded, we have about $118 million sovereign guarantee will be called in, putting the nation's foreign assets at risk. Do you think we understand the agreements we are getting into? Well, that's another question. I mean, what you, your initial question, um, in reply to your initial question, my response was that these types of int instruments are very normal. And I don't think the burden of guilt should be placed on AccuGas for entering into an arrangement that secures them. The question that needs to be asked is whether the government of Nigeria had the capacity to enter into that kind of an agreement and that is a question that we can debate from now until the cows come home. Um, my sense is that uh, I think they misunderstood the implications of what would happen if, this, if, uh, if the value chain 
did not does not function according to the way it's supposed to but function. Marjani, there were so many objections that were raised in spite of the objections raised by virtually every party involved excluding of course Agugas, uh including uh, World Bank itself there were indications that what if things went wrong they didn't heed to the advice well I mean that's a question uh, that you should address more to our governance institutions than to me <laughs> certainly, certainly if I were to uh, make any assessment as an objective consultant from the outside I would say that on paper things seem to work things appear to be in order however again one has to question the uh, the governance the capacity of the governance institutions we have to properly understand the risk that they are entering into on behalf of this government in agreements like this. I think, however, it would be um, to suggest that we should not be entering into these kinds of agreements uh, would be an indictment of our ability to function like a normal country. Okay. I think what we need to do is pay more careful attention to the implications and shore up our own governance institutions and our ability to un and uh, our ability to have the capacity within those institutions to understand the legal implications of what we're in what, what we're getting ourselves no into. doubt about all of you've uh, noted out there now but what should be the securities that our government and then the other party away from Akugas and all of these uh, bodies we look at the PNID as well and we still wonder so what should be the securities that we too should put in place as a people and as a government to also have very sound deals Look, there is, in, there is um, unfortunately, there is a thing in the commercial space known as sanctity contracts. When you enter into a contract, the, those parties to the contract, there is, there is a presupposition that all parties know what they are doing and the risks that are involved. There is, unfortunately, in an environment like Nigeria where there is very high commercial risk, the need, there is a need for government to come in and provide, in certain instances, the kinds of sovereign guarantees that would be required in order to move important projects forward. That's not going to stop. I think the, the idea that, but, but what's important is for, it, is for government and for, and, for, and for business to thoroughly interrogate the risks along the entire value chain of opportunities, whether it's in upstream uh, development of energy resources or along the, the, the power value chain, and um, come up with a proper assessment of whether or not it is worth entering into those agreements or not. So you can't avoid it. You just have to be more discerning about the types of structures and the types of risks the government is willing to commit itself to. Okay. Okay. Now, and they have to be risks that they can afford. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that you should, we should, that's been left out of this conversation is that government did, I think, anticipate that there might be this kind of a situation, and they put in place specific, uh, specifically to address this type of um, default, potential default, a 700 billion naira power intervention fund. But I think the understanding was that the market would sort itself out before uh, this fund runs out. Unfortunately, the fund ran out on December the 18th, 2018, mm. and that is why we are seeing this kind of exposure right now. Marjorie, course, let me bot in now quickly. It's, we are now talking about a way out. Do you think we have any possibilities? Some economic watchers say, well, we should raise at least about $10 million from the current revenue to offset part of the cost in the hope that the federal government would also raise the balance of uh, $30 million to pay off Aku gas. What do you make of this? No, I think absolutely. I mean, there is no running away from the fact that government has to pay off Aku gas because there is a contract that is persisting, okay? Both parties being of sound mind entered into this contract, and it has to be honored. The question then is, going forward, how do we prevent this type of increasingly recurring scenario from, from occurring? And that is where we have to focus our energies and our thoughts on. But as far as avoiding payment of this, I think it would be a very, very hard 
um, to envisage, envisage a scenario where that can be averted. I think we have to look very closely at the fiscal um, um, uh, realities concerning our power uh, value chain. We have to look at our tariff structure. We have to interrogate what are acceptable risks for upstream gas producers. And we have to do it in a manner that secures the national interests of this country. So Thank that you. To Thank, like you. This don't. Mm. Thank you very much, Charles. And it is definitely important for all parties to understand that agreements are binding. We've been speaking with Charles uh, Majumi, the Managing Director, Ignite Advisory Limited.